This is one of the best budget laptops you can get from China right now, and I'll tell you exactly why. If you want to know what cheap budget phones, laptops, and tablets are worth your money, why not subscribe? It's free. Okay, I'll be honest with you, the regular price of the Tech Class F6 Pro is not worth your money. Starting at $600, you can get the very similar Xiaomi Air 12 for the same price. However, this is on sale for $500, and this is a great laptop, and these are the reasons why. All right, so build quality. This thing is metal and feels very premium and very solid. It's definitely more solid than my Xiaomi Air 12 and the Jumper EasyBook 3 Plus. All right, so port selection here is super awesome. You have on one side, you have a USB-C, you have mini HDMI, and a regular USB 3 port. And if you flip it to the other side, you get the micro SD card slot, a regular USB-C port, headphone jack, and the charging port. And you also have the power button here. However, the power button on here is very easy to depress. So if your hand accidentally brushes it, you will accidentally turn the laptop on or off, which is super duper annoying. So there is no logo on the top cover, it's completely empty. And on the bottom, you'll find the logo, the SSD slot, and the rubber legs. Let's talk about this 360 degree hinge. The laptop is a pain to open when it's closed because the notch is way too shallow. And the hinge is really stiff, which is good. And you need two hands to open it. You can flip the laptop all the way around, and to be honest, it's actually incredibly useful. You might think it's useless, but I actually use it a lot now, flipping it all the way around just like that. The bezels around the screen are actually not too small. They are just small enough that they don't look ugly and old, but it's really a far cry from other laptops like the Xiaomi Air 12 and the Jumper EasyBook 3 Plus. The speaker is located here around the edge of the laptop screen and it is a little bit strange and I will talk about that later. The keyboard here is nice. There's lots of key travel, the keys are well spaced out, and it's easy to activate as well. I can type pretty easily on this keyboard, but it's not backlit. The one thing I like about this keyboard is the full size home, page up, page down, and end buttons on the side. However, I really hate the half size up and down buttons which can get very very annoying. The trackpad here is very good also, it's very accurate and multi-finger gestures work very well even in Chrome, and the fingerprint sensor works very well also. However, I do have a couple of things I do find annoying with the trackpad. First of all, it's not the biggest, so doing multi-finger gestures is not as easy as other laptops. The second, you cannot disable pinch to zoom, so sometimes when I'm scrolling it'll activate pinch to zoom and that can get very, very annoying. And the last thing is that as a left-handed user, my finger keeps on bumping into the fingerprint sensor which is super annoying, but if you are a right-handed user, that is not an issue you will have. The display here is quite nice, it's full HD 1080p and the colors are quite nice and saturated and stuff generally looks very nice on the screen. Maximum brightness is okay. It's not as bright as more expensive laptops, so you definitely cannot use this on a sunny day outside, but indoors, it's definitely okay. The touchscreen works fairly well. It's not the most responsive screen. You have to tap it a little bit hard to activate the screen, but it definitely still works quite well for such a large touchscreen. The audio here is definitely a little bit strange, I think, just because of where the speakers are located. I do love the sound of the audio, it is very clear, mids and highs are present and there even is some bass, even during the exploding scenes, and it sounded decent. However, because of where the speakers are located, the sound will sometimes bounce weird depending on what angle your screen is at, and sometimes actually make the audio output quite noisy because it's bouncing off the screen surface. That being said, this is definitely one of the better speakers I've used in a while. You just taste some of that broth first. You taste some of the soup. insane oh, you can really taste the Sichuan pepper in there you can taste the cumin nice and strong as well and then it's salty that is outstanding okay mix the noodles with the nam mix the noodles with the soup and you can actually see also you can just see how much cumin is in there it's there's so Let's talk about battery life, and while I'm not impressed by battery life, it is average and I'm surprised they could get average battery life with a touchscreen included. My use was about 5-6 to six hours of pure web browsing in Chrome, or 7 hours with Internet Explorer, and if I was watching TV below half brightness, I could get up to 8 hours. I definitely prefer more battery life, but this is barely good enough for me. 
charging using the PC port takes about 3 hours to charge, and charging through the USB-C port takes about 5 hours to charge. Alright, so here's one weird thing. When I first booted up the laptop, Windows was activated, no problem, but when I did a factory reset, it wasn't activated anymore, and it's giving me this weird issue. However, I'm quite sure the Windows key is tied to the motherboard, so it shouldn't be an issue, I just have to figure it out. So other than that weird activation issue, performance is great, there's a 128GB tech class SSD in a laptop, and I could do so much stuff on this laptop, browsing Chrome was awesome, 10 tabs no problem, 4K YouTube no problem, I could also edit photos and GIMP really easily as the CPU is pretty powerful. I can edit and export 1080p videos easily, 4K is actually possible on this laptop, but it's laggy and exporting takes forever. That being said, this laptop is definitely powerful enough to be a portable video editing machine for occasional use. However, this is not going to be your main gaming laptop as you cannot run anything too intense, you are limited to 720p at 30fps for anything remotely intense, and mostly older games or less intense indie games that will run well at 1080p. One more thing, I just realized that my router has problems with any Intel 3165 wireless AC card. Do you remember my Jumper EasyBook 3 Plus? That laptop brought down the entire Wi-Fi network whenever it connected, but this laptop here is a lot better. Speeds and ping are not very good. I have the D-Link DIR810 wireless AC router, so think twice if you have this router and want to get a Chinese laptop with the Intel 3165 card. However, I could get some pretty spectacular speeds when I was close to the router when downloading through Steam, so that was definitely nice. However, I do have to say that you should not get this laptop at full price. At 600 bucks, it's just not worth your money. You should wait till it drops to about $500 or lower before it's actually good value for money for the kind of specifications you get from this laptop. Again, if you are interested in what kind of cheap budget phones, laptops, tablets are worth your money, why not subscribe? It's free. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.